Hello everyone, this is Dion Sol. I hope everyone is doing well. And as you see before you, we're currently looking at uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on webpage. Uh, this is actually just a, a msfsaddons.com. And there's a host of add-ons over here. And I'm putting that in my favorites because I, they seem to be constantly updating this website. But that's neither here nor there. What the focus on this video today is, is to show off this um, add-on that I was discovered, which is which is uh, Let's Fly uh, Freeware uh, Flight Planning Utility App. And basically, what this thing does is it allows you to randomly, uh, or what I use it for is to randomly create flights uh, for me. So let me minimize. Hey, there's Carly Simon, by the way. I don't know if any of you young people don't probably not going to know who Carly Simon is, but she was, she's was she been around in the music industry since the 1960s. She's actually a year, she was a year, actually a year older than my dad. Uh, she was born in 1945. Uh, anyway, going off, you know, squirrel, tangent. Anyway, um, so this is the program itself. And uh, it's what I like about it, what I'm using it for is that if I get in that mood where I want no structure at all and all I want to do is just go fly, uh, this little program is a handy little, pro or little utility to have uh, to create your flight. So I thought we'd just do a flight together here. Uh, you have an option of uh, setting, uh, f you know, from like let's say I want to start at my home base at KWJF and then go from there. Uh, or if I just wanted, if I was picking from a list of favorite airports, which I guess this is a list that's already been created. It's probably use a text file. You put in all your codes of all your favorite airports, and then you can just click from there. Or you can do what I, what the purpose purpose is of what I want to use this utility for, and that is randomization. <coughs> now, randomizing. Uh, I want to randomize my takeoff and my landing, so I'll go over here to. I want to still stay in North America, and then I want to randomize everything else. So you put in random. I mean, you could specific, uh, specify like, okay, country. I, I could still say uh, the United States, uh, and then I could pick the region. I can still pick random, and it'll automatically pick there. You know, anywhere you want to go, um, and that sort of thing. Or you can just go, like I said, random, random, and that's what you're going to do right now. We'll go random, random here. So there you go. So now I'm in North America, and it's whatever it picks is where I go. Now. The utilities down here, as you can see, is like I want to take off from a medium airport or like a regional airport. Um, I don't want to pick go from a small airport because I'm trying to divorce myself away from any little hole in the wall airport that NeoFly gives me that basically is just basically a road. It's not even a runway, and uh, I don't I don't like that. And so uh, that's one of the, my pet peeves I have with NeoFly is that you do, it doesn't. If I tell it I want it on hard surface, or it should have some kind of option where you can pick a medium airport or something like that, so you'd be going from place to place that's uh, not not in the middle of nowhere you know if, if you don't want to go there um, you can pick on the type of surface you want so I'm gonna go hard surface on this and you can actually pick the minimum runway I, I want to pick from a runway that's uh, 3,500 feet or greater and that's it now you just leave this blank and so it's probably it's gonna automatically go to the biggest runway out there and let's say that I'm, I'm gonna be flying my uh, uh, Bonanza G36 so let's say we'll make sure it has aviation gas which is kind of whatever uh, so but anyway back over here and then on this this is the arrival airport over here so let's say that I want to um, I want to be within a hundred nautical miles to a thousand nautical miles well because I don't want to be in flight for hours on end so I'm just gonna go my maximum is 250 uh, nautical miles and then the country I'm still gonna stay in uh, North America and then I'm still gonna go random random so then that way no matter what happens I am in North America but I am somewhere in North America which is cut, which is cool. I like that. And of course, we want medium surface, so we're going to go from medium airport to medium airport. I mean, I could change it all up, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep it simple. And then hard surface, of course. Um, and then, as far as the lighting is concerned, uh, you leave it blank. It gives you all, or you can select. Let's say that I want to go to just an ILS approach only. Uh, one, it'll give me all the airports that are that are that or you just click them all and it's going to give you all the airports that are within the criteria I put and then as far as length of runway 
whatever happens happens I'm just gonna leave that alone because it is a medium airport so it's automatically it's going to pick you know and then as far as aviation gas uh, sure why not and then that's it and then all you gotta do is you got departure and from I am my speed is going to be 208 knots because I am flying the G36 uh, turbo and then I just hit let's fly and now it just picked me up an airport see it has 700 and out of the uh, 25,000 airports in the database there actually is uh, 700 that are available so this picked me up some airport here I have no I've never been there before and that's what's what's exciting about this it's in Wisconsin okay so I, I can get that so it's in Wisconsin I'm gonna fly to Michigan uh, so it's 248 nautical miles uh, because of the speed it's calculating I'm gonna be in, in, in the air for 1.2 hours which is not too bad and you can get the information you can click on that information button and it actually automatically brought, or brings up a wedge page to ourairports.com and then it gives you an overview of the airport and a little bit of information about uh, the airport which is which is pretty cool I mean that, that's pretty neato and then you can go over here oops I don't want to do that um, and then you can go over here and then you can go uh, our that's our destination airport and they can give you a little bit of a background of our uh, destination airport in Michigan so it gives you magnetic variance it gives you, you know, field elevation that sort of thing so that's pretty cool that's that, that that I like that I like that a lot so that that's that's pretty sweet so anyway so that's what we got here now if I want to save this now I just hit the save button and then now it just basically wrote the text into notepad so I have the data now you can close the program now you're actually done with the program um, it's not connected to the simulator. All this thing is is just a generate. Now let's say that I didn't want to go there. I, I can just spam this button again, and now it's going to pick. Now I'm going to be up in uh, uh, um, Canada, so Ontario, uh, Ontario area, and this one right here is a 156 nautical miles. So let's say that I wanted to go to Ontario instead. Or uh, a, another scenario could be is let's say I went ahead and did the next step, whereas loading up uh, um, loading up to Sky Vector as an example here. So then we'll go ahead and go to Sky Vector here. We'll go ahead and bring up this information here, uh, which is uh, this. We're going to lose it. So I'll just put it in right here, and that is going to be K E A U to uh, KM KG <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and put in um, you can see where it is right there you can see there's a lot of weather there see I may not want to do this flight because the amount of weather that that uh, you can see with all the blue and the whatever it's or you can just do that just like well we're in a simulation so if we wanted to do it to practice our uh, IFR skills and everything else uh, so we can go ahead and put in our speed of 208 knots and then we can go ahead and put in um, our altitude and because we are going to go from let's see which way which, 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 what direction are we going okay so we're going south so we're going we're going south and we're gonna be passing uh Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We're actually gonna be going right through Wisco Oshkosh. So let's say that uh we're going south, so then we are going south southwest, so we're gonna be going on the eastern side. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can climb up, get away with seventeen thousand five hundred feet. Um because that's that's the with this airplane, that's the optimal. And then we'll go ahead and pick our route. So now it's gonna give us our route right there. Now we can go ahead and do this flight or we can like I say we can go ahead and minimize this and we can just go ahead and just like I said like I just did a minute ago pick something else but we're gonna go ahead and go with the flight that we've already picked because it's it's it, it's gonna be a challenge so now what I want to do is now I picked the flight using that utility uh, and that's pretty much it we're done with the utility so the, the utility is over with so now what we need to do is come in here and then we'll go ahead and get rid of me because now I'm gonna be mr. slideshow so we get rid of that and then now I'm going to bring up the flight plan from Sky Vector. And here we are. Here is our Sky Vector flight plan. And I'm going to take all this data that's right here and we're going to put it into a Microsoft Flight Simulator. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we'll go back in here and we're going to go like this. And we're going to go ahead and this, this you guys already know how to do. But for those of you that don't, you get to watch. 
and I'll put some uh, the usual, you know, skip skip uh, timestamps. And we'll go ahead and go down here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a detail, see what we're going to end up with. Okay, so well, let's go ahead and click on this one right here. Departure. There we go. So we're going to pick that one. Now, uh, that takes care of that. And so then our destination airport is going to be KM. KG. Muskikin? Muskikin? I don't have no idea. And then we'll zoom in. And we'll say, well, we're going to go for right here for our arrival. Cool. So there you go. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to, we've got this as direct right now, but we're going to add in these waypoints. So we're going to put in F-A-L, F-A-L-E-N, put in that waypoint, and we're going to add it. There's our waypoint. And then our next waypoint, we'll go ahead. Okay, now that's a Victor Airway 35. So that's going to be a little problematic because, unfortunately, this air, this thing does not support airways. Because if I, if I put in uh, V345 v, uh, here, it's going to say, what the hell is that? So that's one thing that Microsoft Flight Simulator needs to do is it needs to reflect uh, Victor Airways and Jetways. And it doesn't do it. So uh, I'm just going to cheat then, and it's going to put DLL. And we'll go ahead and put DLL in there. I don't know why my uh, thing's going crazy there, but it is. And then our next one is going to be on Victor Airway 170 all the way to B E or B A E, and that is going to be not a point of interest. That is going to be B O R, and then we will add it. I was just thinking about it. And then we're going to be on Victor Airway 30 all the way to SQUIB. SQUIB, Squib. And then there is Squib in the middle of the of water. Okay, and then uh, that is our flight plan. Let me zoom back out here. And then as far as anything else was concerned I tell you what we're gonna do we're gonna add one I just saw one not to add we'll go ahead and add this right here add and because it's showing me that uh, we are yeah, we're gonna be coming in like this and then coming off so then let's see if we can zoom back let's see if we can go ahead and put in we'll just put it in here but we'll probably change it up to line up with the runway there we go there we go. There's our there's our approach. Just boom, boom, boom. Simple, easy peasy. And there you go. So there is our sky vector thing. So we're all set up and ready to go here. So now we have created our thing set up here. So we're good to go here. Now we'll go ahead and climb on inside. Let's go ahead and get inside the uh, airplane here. All right, so here we are in uh, Chippewa Valley Regional Airport. Never been there before. See, I have to take what Microsoft Flight Sim has given, given me as gospel because, which I know I can't, because, but, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't know this place. Now, it's all clear and sunny and blue skies because I purposely have everything set up uh, a little different. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is now I got to put in X or weather force in here. So let me jump over here to a weather force and uh, go over here to this monitor. So now I have weather force. Weather force is another utility that um, I, I want to see if the grass is greener on the other side, to be frankly blunt and honest. And so I went ahead and paid for Rex 2020 weather force. Um, the only problem I have with Weather Force at this time, as of this recording, is everything works beautifully. I, I like the program. It gives you more detailed information, more control of the weather than the out of the box. But the downside is, is that um, for me personally, my personal experiences, when it transitions between one weather zone to the next weather zone, my frame rates in the simulator go completely to hell. 
and it's definitely related to Rex 2020 weather force. It just kills my frame rate. So you know, I'll be going from 30, 30 or 40 frames a second all the way down to uh, like four or five frames a second at best. And I don't know why, because as soon as I turn it off, you can see this little icon right here. When I turn off the sense census, I can't even pronounce it. Then, um, then all of a sudden I get mat my frame rates back and everything is sexy. And then I have to reapply and have it re-inject the weather again. And that's the downside of weather force has been my personal experience so far. Your mileage may vary. Uh, you may have a faster computer. More than likely, you probably got a faster computer because I'm running a potato now. Uh, com this vintage uh, 2014 vintage computer system that I have. So, you know, it's six years old. But, you know, it's for the most part it works. But at any rate, uh, so that's the problem with this. But when I a activate weather force here. So we'll go ahead and activate weather force and then we'll go ahead and go back inside. It's going to go ahead and inject the weather um, and we'll go ahead and get inside. And you're going to see everything change here in just a second after it gets done injecting. Do, 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 There we go. Okay, well, it didn't, it wasn't a rapid, uh, huge change that I thought it was going to be. Give us some clouds though. So that's good. All right, fine. We'll, we'll go with it. No big deal. All right. So anyway, that's the uh, uh, that's weather force in a nutshell, which is really really I just I didn't I just touched on it. But uh, anyway, so we will go ahead and uh, set up our flight here, and then we'll go ahead and get going. So in order for me to do that, I need go ahead and turn on. sure all of our stuff is good make sure that we do have pitch trim pitch trim is sexy looking good there parking brake is set put our cowling flaps all the way out and and I think we can start this airplane I'll yell out clear prop and then we will start this thing all righty Got to do a little adjustment there, but now we got it all good to go. We got our RPM going right now. We'll crank up a little bit. We'll pull back on the mixture just a smidge so we're not flooding the engine. Let this thing warm up, and as we're letting it warm up here, we'll go ahead and turn on the rest of the switches. You must turn on the rest of the switches. And we'll go ahead and pull our air, get our air going on here. Leave that out temporarily. I wish the developer for the uh, um, 3.0, uh, which is what this is, this is the turbo, uh, uh, the tur G36 turbo. I wish they would make fix this and make all this work. So you can raise the temperature in here to keep uh, the... Uh, you know the uh, uh, windshield from icing over this 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 airplane uh, the uh, ice is over real real easy and they I had one my guy say well hey just turn on the blowers turn on the fans and it's like okay well where's the switch to turn on the fans because here's what I see fan indicator right here and there's no fans I don't hear any sound don't have anything like that so uh, and you got the vent blowers here you got AC blowers here none of this stuff works so when the when one of my you know viewers said hey just turn on the fans and you won't have that problem uh, there's no fans to turn on so I don't know what they were talking about unfortunately uh, maybe they can uh, they see this video and then they can sit there and say hey Dion you dummy it was this thing over here is what you do to turn on the fans and then all will be right as rain then I will know for next time because that's one thing about aviation you are constantly learning it never it never fails you make mistakes and but you just you know, you just keep on learning. It never stops. So we are set and ready to go. And uh, all we got to do now is call Mr. ATC. And uh, we'll go ahead and get the ATIS first. Which I already know is going to be 2997. 
Now, how I knew it was 2.9907 is because on Weather Force, I've got it displayed on my other monitor right over here. So all i got to do is just do one little click, and there we go. And we'll go ahead and put in our altitude. Altitude, I said we're going to go 17,500 feet. We'll go ahead and do that now. I went ahead and removed all of my SciTech stuff. So the only SciTech stuff I have is my... Um, is my my pedals and my nose wheel trim and my uh, throttle quadrant. Um, I've gotten rid of everything else because it's just too much load on my system. And uh, with my with with X Plane, it, everything works fine. But with Microsoft Flight Simulator, the drivers for SciTech are not very good. So I just I just went ahead and bit the bullet and said, you know what, I'm waiting for uh, the. Uh, uh, you know, for the throttle quadrant from uh, a honeycomb to come out, and then once that comes out, I will. I mean, I'm already going to buy one. It's 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 a done deal. I'm just waiting for them to come out for the for the plebs like me, all the little people like me, to be able to afford to get one. And once that happens, I'll buy one. Cause I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and because it, there's a lot of stuff, it replaced a lot of stuff in one shot, which is really really cool. All right, so that takes care of that. We got that set up and ready to go. We got our thing there. Uh, we'll go ahead and put our transponder to on, I guess, and just to let everybody know. And uh, we will go ahead. Should you know? You know no, screw it. We'll, we'll, we can always do it later, I think. So let's go ahead and say that we are going to take. Well, let's first find, find out. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and let it say what it's going to say because we're going to be going south. East. So let's go ahead and say we're going to go east. Ground Beechcraft November 502 Delta Mike ready to taxi departure to the east with Sierra. Beechcraft November 502 Delta Mike taxi to and hold short of runway 22 by a taxiway Bravo. Contact tower on 120.925 when ready. Okay. Taxi to and hold short runway 22 by a taxiway Bravo Beechcraft to Delta Mike. Now I am totally unfamiliar with this airport completely, so I'm going to zoom in this airport right here so I can follow the taxiways. And they said just take uh, taxiway Bravo. So I'm assuming that Bravo is this one right here. And can we pan? Can you let me pan? No? Okay, fine. Whatever. All right, well, that's fine, and that's what we'll do. So we'll just pan it. Well, I cheated here a little bit, and as you can see down here in the bottom right here, I modernized a little bit. So we're going to pretend that's the tablet action going on there. And uh, so there is our route. They told us to go down Bravo, which then turns into Alpha, I guess. And then you just take Alpha all the way down to Runway 22 and take off. So without further ado, let's go ahead and make that happen. Okay, request takeoff. Tower Beechcraft November 502, Delta Mike ready for departure to the east at runway 22. Beechcraft November 502, Delta Mike cleared for takeoff runway 22, departure to the east approved. Actually, before I do that, okay, I better acknowledge. Cleared for takeoff runway 22, Beechcraft to Delta Mike. Flight director on. Uh, heading, heading, I'll go ahead and put heading at 122. Oh, that's, that's the damn, that's the wrong thing, damn it. Oopsie, my bad. Heading, that's what I'm supposed to be at. 22. Uh, actually, well, actually, it's supposed to be what? Let me go back to this. Uh, it's actually coming in. 224 is actually what it's supposed to be. So we need to click this 224 because of the magnetic variance of 4 degrees, I guess. So, okay, we got that taken care of. So then once I hit the autopilot button, a flight director, can I pre-select my flight director or my, uh, 
Okay, it's not going to let me... Is it going to let me pre-select it? Okay, so it is. So we'll do 100 knots. We'll pre-select it at 100 knots. And... Then once we get... Uh, we'll, it, it, it will engage the uh, GPS once we are uh, away from the runway and, and that sort of thing. The only mistake I made right now is I didn't put enough fuel in. So we've got to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat here and we're going to put in 80% fuel. Forgot to do that at the start, so my bad. There we go. So now we got fuel. I don't have to worry about fuel. Okay, so all set and ready to go there. And we'll go ahead and get rid of this insert because I don't like that insert. And then uh, we'll go ahead and turn our transponder to on. To go, go. Go, go, gadget. All right. All lights are on. Everything is set. Everything is green. Pitch trim is set. Counting flaps are currently set. Looking down, don't see anybody coming in. Go down here and we will go ahead and center our screen and let's go. Get in. Put some uh, right rudder into this. Get back on the center line here. And we are off the ground. Flaps up. Keep pitching. Keep pitching up. In case we have an engine failure, we'll be able to slide down. Keep that pitch up going. Everything's looking good. Everything is fine. We are just about out of, so we'll go ahead and get the gear up. But we are now past the runways. Continue a high uh, cl rate of climb. Yes, I was just a little busy. Beachcraft 2 Delta Mike, you are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Alright, you're welcome. Tower Beachcraft November 502 Delta Mike frequency change. Okay, we'll continue our climb here a little bit. And I don't want to talk to anybody right now, so I'll just go ahead and tune to the frequency. And I would say we're getting high enough here, so we'll go ahead and Engage the autopilot. Let the autopilot recover. Which it will. And we'll go ahead and hit our nav. GPS. There it is. GPS just came on. 100 knots. So now all I got to manage is my... Uh, a mixture. And here we go.
Alrighty, we are back, and as you can see, we are setting up here to land on runway six. I already talked to uh, ATC, and so all I'm trying to do now is just get in position to land at runway six here at Muskin Field. You can see, of course, the glare of the uh, right over there is where we're going to land. <coughs> see the flashy flashies. Alrighty, as you can see, see we are kind of coming up here to the uh, airport right now. Getting ready to land. Got our final. Clearance for final. Still out of position. a little low <coughs> for the uh, approach here. I'll make it work. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Try to dip that right wing down to offset the uh, bit of a crosswind I got going on here. put a lot of right rudder in there. You can see I'm just kind of off. Should be going around right now, but I think I'm going to try to stick it anyway. Uh, 
104. Not too bad. Did no bounces, so that's good. The thing I screwed up on is I forgot to turn on my lights. <laughs> Daxi to parking. And ground, beach craft, November 5th. <coughs> Excuse me Delta as I cough into your ear. Sorry about that. Set. And we are here. Even though we got all that ice on there, even though I had the ice, I had the de ice turned on. See, there's the de ice, and it's still illustrating that I have ice on the, uh, which is interesting. I guess I ran out of de-icing fluid, I guess. Still cool, anyway. But we made it. It's probably going to remain that way because it's so damn cold. Well, anyway, I definitely appreciate you guys watching. Definitely like, subscribe, and if you feel my content is worthy, I do have some donation link in the description down below. It's PayPal. I know PayPal has got a lot of drama. I understand that, but that's, I do have Ethereum. Um, I'll probably put the Ethereum uh, thing in there if you guys want to donate it with Ethereum. Um, that'd be awesome too. Uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm into crypto. I will we'll be into cryptocurrency. I don't really care. Uh, anything to uh, whatever, you know, if you guys feel my content is worthy and you want to express yourself is most appreciated. And if you do, I'll give you a shout out on the next video. You know, say, hey, so and so is donated to. You know, the previous video here, and I'll give them a shout, especially if you have a YouTube channel or anything you want to shout out that is uh, appropriate. You know, aviation appropriate would be good. Um, I most appreciate that. Um, but uh, all in all, like I say again, the the flight went well. Um, I am, I do have issues with the uh, the icing stuff, that, uh, but that's a Microsoft Flight Simulator thing. And I did notice that when you're away from mountains, you don't have any of those spikes uh, with the latest version of Microsoft Flight Simulator that you have that uh, gives you those spikes in the, uh, um, you know, in, in the terrain, uh, just especially on the West Coast. I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this, this video. And like I said, you know, this... Uh, freeware flight planner thing is awesome. It worked out really, really well. Uh, I'll definitely have the, the the link in the description down below, along with the link to this uh, Bonanza G36 uh, mod that you can get. Or at least I got it over at uh, um, Nexus Mods uh, and that sort of thing. And it's a cool little utility that uh, makes it so you get gives you purpose to your flight. Doesn't give you any money, but that's that's fine. You know, it just if you just want something to do and just go somewhere that's just totally randomized, you can set it up and just make it happen. So, I appreciate it again. I'll catch you guys next time, and uh, we'll uh, go somewhere and do something. So, kick here, guys. Bye.